Hey everyone, Cedric from Vertex Marketing Agency. Uh, and in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly which event you should be optimizing for inside Ads Manager. Now, for anyone that's uh, watched uh, my videos in the past, you'll probably notice that the background is a little bit different and I haven't posted a, a video in a little while. The reason for that is because I actually just moved to a new home um, and uh, yeah, I'll have to do something with my, my office here at some point, but uh, happy to be back. And um, again, in this video, we're gonna be talking about what event you should be optimizing for. Cause I get that question all the time. Like, Hey Cedric, uh, I have a service-based company and I just don't know if I should be optimizing for lead schedule or, uh, you know, we get deals. Like, should I be sending those back to Facebook and then be optimizing for deals? And same thing with the e-com, right? Like, should I be optimizing for purchases? Like I don't get enough. Like what about add to carts? Um, I could maybe get more of that, which would equal more purchases, right? So, uh, that's exactly what I'm going to be answering in this video. So, um, I'm going to show you what I would do if um, I was working with a service-based company and then what I would do if I was working with an e-com company. Um, but before we uh, kind of dive into that, I just want to go over the basics, like what are all the standard events that are available to you. I'm going to talk a little bit about custom events, but um, I mean, if you're wondering what event you should be optimizing for, most likely custom events are not for you. That's a little bit more advanced. Uh, but uh, yeah, with that being said, let's actually start with the basic and I'll show you exactly what are all the standard events. And if you already know that, then feel free to skip to the next uh, uh, section. Everything should be bookmarked in this video. All right, so um, I'm actually on a page that shows you all the different standard events. And in case you're wondering, the link is in the description of this video. So you're gonna see that some events are more specifically for uh, e-com stores and you're gonna see some other events are more for service-based companies, okay? And uh, this is basically the list, all right, of all the events. And in case you're wondering like, oh, like what is a contact event? Like, is that like when I get a lead? Well, there's actually like a, a description of exactly what uh, that event means, right? So here we can see the contact event. Well, it's contact between a customer and your business through phone, SMS, email, chat, or other means. So an example of that is, let's say you have a phone number on top of your website and someone clicks that number to call you then that would be a contact event, okay? Now, just in case you're wondering, okay, well, how the heck do I set all of this up? Well, first of all, you have to figure out what are the events that you wanna track, right? And then I have a bunch of other videos on this channel showing you exactly how to set up your tracking. Um, so go ahead and watch these videos if you don't currently have a tracking setup uh, implemented because you definitely need that in order to, I mean, <laughs> to optimize for events, right? It kind of starts there. But just have a look at this list. And what you want to do is just basically write down in, in terms of priority or in terms of order what comes first. So obviously the first or first thing that happens on your website, there's a page view. Let's say you have a service-based company. So there's a page view, then um, they, you know, they land on your landing page, and then maybe you have a phone number at the top, right? And when they click, that's a contact event. Um, and then maybe after that, there's a form that they have to submit. And then uh, when they f submit that form, then that's what you consider a lead. And then once they submitted that form, they get redirected to a page where they can schedule a call, right? And then um, when they schedule a call, then that would be considered a schedule, right? Which we have right here. So the events that you would basically have on your website is page you, right? Everyone gets page you, and then you would have lead. Uh, you would have maybe contact and then you would have schedule, right? And uh, that's basically it. So what you would want to send and track to Facebook are those events, okay? Now, in terms of what you want to optimize for, that's where it kind of depends on how much volume you're getting. So definitely never optimize for something like a view content unless you're kind of just more looking for brand awareness, but uh, probably everyone that's watching this video really wants results. And for every dollar that they spend uh, on ads, they wanna make sure that they get as much as possible, right? And the way you can do that is by optimizing for the event that is the closest to what you want. So in the service space space, right? So, and I'm gonna talk about e-commerce just after, but uh, definitely, you know, most likely you're probably more interested in bookings. If let's say that's your flow, right? Um, really what you want is you want them to schedule a call uh, with someone on your sales team so they can close them. So in a perfect world, you would just be optimizing for the schedule event and 
you would just get a lot of people booking calls with you. But the thing is, is there's something called the learning phase. And that's kind of one of the things that you have to look at. So just look at your analytics. And especially if you're running Facebook ads right now, that's perfect. If not, then you might need to look at something like GA4, or maybe your CRM, just see how many like schedules you're getting. So if you are uh, currently running Facebook ads, perfect. Like how many bookings are you getting from your Facebook ads? Is it more than 50 a week per ad set? If the answer to that is yes, then what you could do is you could actually uh, be optimizing for the schedule event and it would definitely be better for you than optimizing for the lead event. I'm saying definitely, I would probably say like 90, there's 90% chances it's never a hundred, like every business is different, uh, but it's very, very likely that you optimizing for the schedule event is gonna generate you better results. Um, and the way I know that um, is just honestly through experience because what I'll often do with the company is actually I'll have a campaign optimizing for leads and I'll have another campaign optimizing for schedule. And sure, the one optimizing for leads will give me more leads, but then the one optimizing for schedule will actually give me more bookings. Um, so the traffic uh, with the schedule event, I find it's just like better quality traffic. So uh, definitely if you can optimize for, let's say a schedule, because let's say that's the last thing in your sales cycle, before, you know, like after that, that's it, it's a deal then um, you definitely want to try optimizing for schedule if you get enough volume right if you maybe get like I don't know two or three uh, schedules a week then that's not enough and you can always test it right you launch a campaign um, put a decent amount of budget meaning like if you think that a cost per schedule is gonna I don't know, cost you let's say $30 then do 30 times 50 for the ad set. And I'll leave that link in the description of this video. So uh, this article talks about how many events you need in order to leave the learning phase. And sometimes as well, let's say you get, I don't know, 30 schedules. And here I think they're saying it's 50, right? Right, 50 optimized events in the first week to leave the learning phase. Sometimes I see that even if you are not able to leave the learning phase, well, you're actually still getting better results than just, let's say, optimizing for a lead event where with the lead event, you get enough volume, let's say, to leave the learning phase. So um, it's kind of something that you'll have to test, but I can almost guarantee you if you get like five booking in a week, then maybe you don't wanna be optimizing for bookings, you wanna be optimizing more just for the leads and then build it up, get better creative, start spending more, right? So by having better creatives, you're able to decrease your CPA um, or your CPL. And then when you start doing that and things are working, then you'll be able to start spending more. And then eventually you can maybe move to a schedule event. I do that with brands all the time, right? When we start, the budget is a little bit low. Are you, I mean, it's a new account, so we don't know what works and what doesn't work. So our CPL is definitely uh, a little bit higher. And then with time, right, after let's say two to three months, and we can actually lower the CPL, start spending more because we're getting good results. And then we can actually start and looking at moving to uh, optimizing for the schedule event, let's say. Now a question, another question, uh, and then after that, I'll move to uh, e-com companies. But a question that I get often is, can I actually send my deals, right? back to Facebook and then be optimizing for that because that's really what I want. Um, so the answer to that, uh, and I'm talking about again, still service based companies here. The answer to that is yes, but the issue is the same issue with the schedule event, right? So if you're only getting a, a small amount of deals per day, then like, let's say it's one deal a day, then that's probably not gonna be enough to actually feed the algorithm. And another thing to consider is that if you send a deal to Facebook and let's say that you send it properly with all the data so that you have a high quality match, it's still possible that Facebook might receive that data and might actually not be able to attribute that to one of your campaign because the attribution window is one day view, seven day click. So if the sales cycle, let's say is, I don't know, 14 days, then it's not really gonna do you any good because it just takes too long for your company to close a deal in order for Facebook to be able to attribute that to an ad because again, it's seven days. So let's say after they click the ad and become a lead, then like, you know, let's say that happens within one day, you, like you basically have like six or seven days to close that lead. Um, and if you don't, then that deals wouldn't be able to be attributed to one of your uh, ad, ad set or campaign. So that's kind of the other thing to keep in mind. So you can try optimizing for like the deals that you send back to Facebook and 
um, you know, you can be sending a deal to Facebook and what you would do is in, in the event name, that's something like you would call that a purchase or you could use a custom event uh, and call it deal if you want it. But uh, honestly, custom events, I don't use them often. I'll use it if we have like a very complex funnel, but I'm a strong believer that every standard events, they, I mean, as you saw, right, they have a description. If I go back to, to this article, like Facebook knows what it means. And I, I feel like you start a little bit stronger when Facebook knows what you're looking for. Like there's a difference in, in terms of the AI and how they target people when you optimize for view content versus optimize for schedule. Like you'll see, you'll get a lot more view content for a cheaper price. But again, the quality is not as good as a, let's say a schedule event. So going back to my point, so you can try optimizing for deals. Honestly, there hasn't been a lot of uh, companies that I've worked with in the service space where optimizing for deals worked really, really well. And um, I've worked with like very, very large companies. Like we spending like three to four hundred thousand dollars a month on facebook ads and even then like we couldn't really make it work so uh i recommend just optimizing for the lead schedule event if you're a service-based company or maybe you know you could try a custom event but that would be my recommendation so again just to wrap this up uh, look at how many events you're getting if you don't think you can actually uh deliver on the 50 optimizing your event per ad set right so uh, just something to consider if it's uh, it's not per ad account it's per ad set because each ad set has its own brain so for you to leave the learning phase it takes 50 events right so if you don't think you can get at least around there then i would say try to optimize for the event uh before that and then with time then you can launch maybe another ad set or campaign and then just try that other uh, event that you want to you know optimize for now moving to e-commerce so it's i would say 95 percent of the time for e-commerce even if you can't reach that 50 event uh per ad set goal we select a purchase event so we're going to be optimizing for purchase because that's really what we want um there's honestly with, with service-based companies there's so many variables like if you once you get the lead you know the sales rep can call there's so many things that you can control to even if let, let's say that lead is not super high quality you can still work that lead right you can send them sms emails there's so much you can do with ecom you're not going to call everyone that I don't know, opt is in for the, let's say the 10% discount. You might send them like emails or if they add something to your cart, you know, they might send the emails, but you don't have a sales team really working that lead. That's why like they just need to purchase because if they don't purchase, like nothing really, it really is going to happen. So for e-com stores, you need to be optimizing for the purchase event. The only exception, right? Like, as I said, like about, I recommend this for about 95% or I'd probably even say like 98%. Uh, the only exception is I've worked with a company that sells gold. Um, so for them, I mean, it obviously depending on how much an ounce of gold is worth, but for them, like uh, a purchase is just worth so much money and um, like generating purchases from their ads. Also, the sales cycle was very long. It's just like it did not really, really make sense. So what we had to do is we had to more just optimize for like add to cart or sometimes we'll have an opt-in where they can learn a little bit more about the gold, where it's from, all that fun stuff, right? Um, so it's we would optimize for a lead, but that's really the only exception is if you have a product that costs like a lot of money, like we're talking about uh, more than $2,000 um, and like your spend, your budget is very low and just, you know, let's say you have a new company, let's say you sell like electric scooters that cost like two to three thousand dollars and you're a brand new company like i don't know if i would recommend optimizing for purchases i would probably try like another type of event like maybe like add to cart uh or like maybe a lead event but one thing i will say though is if ever that's you always go here when you're creating your campaign click on sales okay like even if you're going to be optimizing for i mean just always click on sales if you're e-commerce you click on sales you go here and you can still pick other like events that are not like the sales. Let me just turn this off. And then we'll just select website. Like you can still go here and look all the events that you you can select, right? So there's a lot of different things that you can select. Uh, you're gonna see that some events here are blocked. So contact, customized product, basically all the events for a service-based company are blocked. But there's a lot of different events that you can select here. Like, like I said, maybe it's like add to cart. 
Um, and then optimize for that again, if your average order value is, or not your average order, but if the product costs like, let's say more than $2,000 or $3,000, then you want to maybe optimize for something else as a purchase. But uh, don't want to take too much time talking about that because I know that's a very small percentage of uh, my audience that have a product that costs this much. But if that's you, then you know I just want to make sure that that was covered. And then for service-based company, I'm sure probably a lot of you guys know this, but it's going to be the opposite, right? So you can click on create always, always leads. I know some guys recommend uh, a sales campaign, even if you're a service-based company, but I really don't recommend that. Um, and I, I do have a lot of experience with service-based. So uh, click on leads. Then when you hit continue, if we go to the ad set, I'm just going to select website. Obviously you select your pixel and then you're going to see all the conversion event. It says inactive because this is just a dummy ad account, but you're able to select, let's say the lead event or the schedule event. But um, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. So again, just to recap, it really, really depends on how many events you can generate, right? So if you can leave the learning phase because you get enough event, then it's definitely worth it to try optimizing for that next thing right on your list, right? Like I said, like map out all your events in the right order. And then if you can get enough event, let's say with the lead event, then try going uh, for the, let's say the schedule event and test it. And hey, let's say that you only get 15 events for, let's say with the schedule in one week, still try it. Like after a little bit, like do another campaign optimizing for the schedule event. Cause who knows, you might actually get better results. But as a more place to start, I would recommend starting with an event that you know has a little bit more volume. Um, and I would also recommend to never go before the leave event, right? So that's a sweet spot. So I would say it's between lead schedule or maybe contact or complete registration, uh, but don't go and optimize for like a view content um, or just like straight up traffic. Um, that's probably one of the worst thing you can do <laughs> in terms of getting the most amount of money for every dollar that you spend on uh, Facebook. But that is it for this video. If you have any questions specifically for your business, uh, just leave a comment, just say, hey Cedric, like, you know, this is my business, this is what I do. What event do you think I should be optimizing for? And then uh, I'll go ahead and reply and give you my recommendation. But guys, that is it, bye for now.